I'm Kelly. Welcome to FBC Online. Well, I don't know what you're going through and how your experience is with all that is going on right now. But I'll tell you a little story. In the beginning, I wasn't having such a good time. Our vacation plans were canceled and I was bummed. We were doing one of the things that we absolutely love to do, which is fossil hunt. And at the time I was sitting at the at the bottom of a creek bed looking for trilobites and I was looking for something very small as I knew that they were about a centimeter long. I was looking for the little tiny trilobite. Well, I was feeling down. I was depressed. I was having a pity party and talking to God about my woes and I t lifted my head for a moment and this is what I saw. There it was. The biggest trilobite I had ever seen, it was raised off of the off of the rock. It's incredible. For the first time, I got this amazing trilobite and God gave it to me that day. But he gave me much more than this. And that was the lesson <laughs> that he had for me that day, which is, okay, you're having your pity party, but if you want to, you choose to lift your head and see my glory, see my blessings, see all that I have done and am doing and will do. All we have to do is just lift our head and see. What does God have for you today? This is my As we continue to worship, we have this awesome opportunity to pray with each other this morning. With everything going on in this world, we still get to be the hands and feet of Christ. We get to be a community that prays together and does life together for God's glory. So as we come to this space this morning, would you take some time to comment your prayer requests and your praises, and then I'll close us in prayer in just a little bit.
Will you pray with me? God, we are thankful for you. We are thankful for the opportunity to come together this morning and to praise you and to sing your praise. And as we worship, we pray that you would just be with us. There are many things that are troubling us and we just pray that you would help lighten that load, help us to focus on you and your glory and not on the troubles that we're having. Lord, we also ask that you would help us to celebrate the blessing that you've put in our lives. Help us to celebrate you and to praise you this morning. God, you are so good and so gracious, and we just ask that you would help us to grow towards and with you this morning. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
And as we go into this part of the worship service, um, I recognize that the month of March was our America for Christ offering emphasis, where we talked about different ministries around the United States and how our prayer support and financial support helps make these ministries happen. But with COVID things going on, that kind of got lost in the shuffle with things. So I just want you to know that the America for Christ offering is still available for people to give to. And the money that goes to that, 100% of it goes to ministries here locally and around the United States. So thank you for giving. And then also thank you so much for just mailing in or doing your regular offerings online. Um, those, that effort that you take to do that make a real difference in our church family and in the kingdom. So thank you. Let's pray. God, thank you for just the opportunity to give that you have given so much to us. God, help us to truly recognize that. And God, we ask your blessing upon this offering that is, it is used around the globe and here locally. We thank you for the hands that gave and we thank you for the work that you're doing with it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Yeah.
Good morning. You know, I am excited to share a little story with you this morning um, from my childhood. When I was a kid, I always looked forward to the visits that we would do with my mom's brother, who I called Uncle Junior. Yeah, Junior was his name. So anyway, when we would travel and go see him, it was so interesting and so fun to go to his farm. He did something that he called truck farming. And what that meant to him was that he had a small farm with five or six acres and he raised vegetables and he sold them at the local farmers market. And he was already retired, so he did this for supplemental income. But the interesting thing that he did was he used no machines or engines to do his work. He did not own a tractor or a tiller. He actually used all of the labor from a mule. Yes, a mule, just like the little house on the prairie in the 1800s. And so he would hook up his mule and he would plow and he would um, tend to his farm and take large amounts of vegetables to the market. He was quite interesting indeed, but never more so as one day he approaches me and says, Randy, do you know how to take a handgun from someone if they um, are trying to uh, shoot you? And I'm like, no, actually I do not. And so he says, come here, let me show you. And so he gets a stick and he has me hold it. And for about 15 minutes, he teaches me how to take a handgun from someone if I'm unarmed myself. And I didn't think that much of it. I did recognize that he was in the Air Force and he was retired from the Air Force. Um, but I just thought maybe that's something they train everyone to do in the Air Force. Um, but unfortunately, not too long after that, he died suddenly from a blood clot. And we we're at the funeral, and it's really sad, obviously, but um, the military came to take part in the funeral, and actually they had a spokesperson from the Department of Defense, and they told about all of his um, military things that were going on in his life, the medals he had won, he was a Vietnam War hero, and also I learned that he was in the Secret Service. And so he had all these um, accomplishments under his belt. And I realized that my uncle Junior, who I thought was just a truck farmer, and I knew this much about him when there was actually this much to know. And I walked away from that funeral thinking, wow, there was a whole lot more to Junior than I ever knew. We well, you know as I think about it, do I, do I have that same kind of concept with Jesus in that do I just know this much about who Jesus is when there's really an infinite amount to know? And like, is my Jesus, my idea of who Jesus is way too small? Well, as I look into scripture here in Mark chapter four, I can see that the disciples were in the same situation. Um, at this point, they had been with Jesus a short while. They had seen him do some really awesome miracles. They had, um, he's healed people. He's fed thousands of people. But here at a very special moment in time, they got an even bigger glimpse of who Jesus really was. Here starting with Mark chapter four, verse 35. On that day when evening had come, he said to them, let's go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd, they took him with them in their boat, just as he was, and other boats were with him. And this is, by the way, on the Sea of Galilee. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves were breaking into the boat, so that the boat was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on a cushion. And they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we're perishing? And he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And then he said to them, Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled, filled, they were filled with great fear and said one to another, who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? And as I reflect on my experience with my uncle Junior and I look at their experience with Jesus as well, and I wonder who did they think Jesus was? As we look from this passage, we can see 
One, they thought he was a great teacher and they had been following and listening to his incredible teachings. But also, they recognized that he was a miracle worker, maybe like a great prophet. But to have him change the weather, to stop a storm with his words, that was not on their radar. And seeing him doing that terrified them. They weren't just like, oh, wow, that's cool. They were terrified because Jesus was so much bigger than they had ever thought about that it was terrifying. And in fact, the disciples, as they continued with him, they learned more and more about how amazing and how powerful Jesus was. And I reflect on toward the end of Mark, actually, when Jesus is in front of the high priest, the high priest asked himself, Are you the Messiah? Are you son of the most blessed one? And Jesus answered, I am. Now in these, these words, the high priest was acknowledging and asking the question, Are you really who you say you are? But the way Jesus answered was phenomenal. You see, it wasn't just simply the words, Yeah, that's me, like we would say in English. But the words he used here to identify himself as I am, those are the same exact words that Moses heard when he was at the burning bush. And when he said, who do I say sent me? And God said, I am. These are the same kind of words that Jesus used to identify that he was the Messiah. This is phenomenal. And here's the point for us, that as we recognize and we begin following Jesus, we need to give ourselves permission to understand that maybe our God is too small. Maybe that our concept of Jesus and our understanding of who Jesus wants us to be in this world is way too small. That actually Jesus is so much bigger than our little finite brains can imagine, that we need to open ourselves up to understand that Jesus, as part of the, the Godhead, created the universe. And not only that, but gave his life for us, as we talked about on Easter, but that Jesus wants an intimate relationship with us, that this super powerful, supernatural God who created everything that we see, can control the weather, controls the storms, wants an intimate relationship with us. And that very often we hear the name Jesus so much, we may have grown up reading God's Word and have heard all these stories about Jesus from Matthew, Mark, and Luke, but we need to take them from just being stories that we read stories that we've heard and to taking it right here and understanding that the most amazing God of the universe is calling us and wanting us to be a part of his team to be part of his family but to do so we have to drop everything else and put him first and right now I think one of the biggest things that may be really difficult for us to drop is our fear and same for the disciples here. Jesus said to them, why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And that whatever we face in life that is fearful, and right now we may feel like we have a lot to be afraid of, but recognize our life is this long. In fact, James said our life is like a vapor that appears for a little while and then disappears. Our life really only lasts this long, but eternity, is huge and at anything that we face in life we don't have to be afraid of because Jesus is right there with us and calling us and beckoning, beckoning us to be part of his family and so whatever fear that you have to face today recognize that you're facing that with Jesus that you're facing that with the full power and majesty of the creator of the universe and that no matter what comes in front of you today or tomorrow or next week or this next decade that you do not have to be afraid that Jesus is with you.
please pray with me now. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for just showing us that we can live life without fear. That no matter what is in front of us, no how big that mountain may be or that obstacle, you're bigger. So God, thank you for walking with us every step in this broken world, this broken life that we live in. Thank you for your kingdom and your work in your name. In Jesus' name, amen.